Jesus. Hello, dear eel lovers, uh, welcome back to the Compendium of Discomfort. My name is Michael, and uh, today we're here to talk about a, about something really, really, truly amazing, and that's uh, Takashi Mika's uh, propaganda anime pledge to peace. Um, or maybe not. Let's not talk about this crap. Let's talk about actually good stuff. Um, maybe you heard about this relatively new indie director uh, Kurosawa. Of course now all of you go to Akira Kurosawa. No, uh, Kiyoshi Kurosawa. Um, still not that new and young and fresh anymore, but still making brilliant movies and he took some time off, like his last movie was released in 2020, that was Wife of a Spy. I saw that in theaters back in the days and haven't seen it since, and at the time I had more trouble understanding movies than I have now, so I should maybe rewatch that. I really, really liked it, but maybe I missed something. But that's a thing with his movies anyway. I watched quite a lot, according to Letterboxd, 23 of his movies, and I love them, usually, and very often I completely forgot that he's an absolutely brilliant director, and uh, just, uh, I don't know, his movies are weird in the sense that they are so, like, simple, and not very eye-popping, not very catchy in a way, that they often don't leave a big um, impression, maybe? So it's very strange, because while watching the movies are usually astonishingly great, beautiful and amazing, but a lot of them I finish and I remember they're great but if you would ask me about a single scene of them I'm like hmm what actually happened there and then I watch it again and holy shit that's the best movie I've ever seen and um yes it's a really really weird relationship my brain and his movies have so uh yeah uh, quite funny but he's a uh, absolutely amazing and fantastic and I probably I just need to watch them a few times because um yeah to to get them stuck like a little bit more uh, complicated uh, music um instead of a catchy pop song or something like that so anyway so he he usually does very fun genre movies that uh, feel somehow wrong and the one we're talking about today is the same because of his um, style that's very minimalist totally gorgeous beautiful but a little bit too simple to uh, clean not flashy at all not showing off at all and it's a very very strange man but uh, one of the greatest directors that japan has to offer currently and after his break after wife of a spy suddenly this year he released um three movies and they're all absolutely amazing the first one was chime i talked about this in, on this channel a little bit earlier um so before anyone even watched um that's probably one of the best horror movies of the year it's uh, pretty short, like 40 minutes, 50 minutes, something like that. And it was first released as a kind of NFT, which went totally wrong. And now it's still playing in cinemas in Japan after this completely uh, botched uh, release. And uh, let's hope it will just be regularly available, because I think it just has a lot of views on Letterboxd, so like what, 15,000? And I, I guess most of them are just pirated, 
because uh, nobody wants NFTs and uh, yeah, so people just watched it uh, the way they wanted to watch it. Not actually legal, but uh, yeah, maybe some people learned a lesson that you don't want NFTs because that's a bad idea. Um, and after that, they released his French remake of his own movie, Serpent's Pass, which I watched, and it's so long ago that I watched the original Serpent's Pass that I can't really remember, and I don't know which one is better, but I like this one very much, even though because it's mostly in French, and reading Japanese is more difficult than just listening, um, probably there are more things that I would have to... Um, yeah, understand in a in a rewatch. So I hope that gets released as a, on Blu-ray or something really soon. But I'm I'm quite optimistic because I mean it's a French uh, Japanese co-production, and usually um, yeah that should be available at some point. I mean I mean he he did uh, was it French as well? I think that's was a French movie. So the Gero type, um, which is mostly unavailable in the world everywhere i think so um was really nice it was a nice a ghost story but um, i i think it's mostly unavailable i have no idea the is this a japanese blu-ray pretty sure and um, probably there's a french blu-ray but besides that i i think it's mostly forgotten and i hope the serpent's pass remake won't go that way but uh yeah i'm, I'm optimistic because it's more of a like crime thriller thing and that should be more of interest uh, for many people and um, yeah just uh, not so long ago uh, third window films in the uk released the gorgeous wonderful the guard from the guard from the underground and uh, from underground um another thing that was somehow produced and i think in the end, co-financed from a French studio or something like that. Um, great, great, uh, yeah, it was a kind of horror film. Um, you should watch it. I should watch it again. It's a lot of fun. It's uh, His movies are very often very fun. They don't seem like that, but uh, very fun. Same, uh, the movie today that we are gonna talk about, that's... Uh, Cloud. Yeah, cloud, cloud, cloud. I can find out this one here. Cloud. Uh, that's half my face. I look like a scary serial killer. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, and so here. here. Scary man. There's a lot of scary stuff happening in this movie, but it's not a horror film. First, I thought, okay, this is some kind of a, of a home invasion horror thingy, and um, bits of it are, but uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so before we go into that, let's uh, finish the cast and so on the crew. And um, of course, Kiyoshi Kurosawa himself is most famous for Cure and Pulse. Maybe Tokyo Sonata. Um, I would recommend uh, Retribution, which is absolutely fantastic. And uh, of course, he made the movie um, uh, Sweet Home, which basically was the inspiration for the Resident Evil games, if I remember correctly. And for me, the movie that actually got me into Kurosawa, because I, I know I watched Cure a long, long, long time ago, and maybe I fell asleep. At least I, I can't remember a single thing about this movie, and I haven't watched it again since then. I should. I know it's a. It must be completely fantastic. But anyway, uh, what got me into Kurosawa was a uh, journey to the shore. Absolutely beautiful, gorgeous uh, drama, ghost story. Um, I watched that. I think it was the opening movie of the Nippon Connection, um, maybe 2015, maybe 16, something like that. And um, 
yeah, that blew me away. And uh, since then, I got into his stuff quite a lot, and uh, I loved everything I've seen since then. I, I really can't remember any movie where I felt like. Mm -hmm. That's not so great. And uh, he actually made uh, a movie that's called Seven's Code, where Atsuko Maeda plays the uh, lead role, and she actually had her first uh, action scene, which now, as we know, led to a Baby Assassin's uh, Nice Days, where she does some action as well. And uh, one thing that's very funny, um, this movie Cloud here, has some nice action as well, but mostly just shooting. And somehow some people came up with it, yeah, but uh, that's nice, but he won't be directing anything like Baby Assassins anytime soon. But uh, probably most people don't know this. He directed a movie that's called Beautiful New Bay Area Project. It's only 29 minutes long. It has some pretty awesome action scenes and I think he should actually he could do a full like action movie with nice fight choreography and stuff and uh, yeah he, he would be able to do that I'm very sure it wouldn't look as flashy but uh, for fighting scenes that's usually not so bad because then you can actually see what's happening um, so good uh, yeah he would be able to do that, uh, dear critics who might not have seen this movie. You should watch it, it's really, really nice. And it's only 29 minutes. Go! Anyway, uh, cast. Cast. Um, the lead role here is played by uh, Masaki Suda, um, very, very famous uh, actor, singer, and so on. Most famous as the voice of the heron in the boy and the heron. Was he the heron? Yes, and uh, I'm most famous, but uh, yeah, uh, he was in a common writer Dabr, Dabr like a W, because a W is obviously pronounced double, not W, and therefore it means double, like two. Yeah, uh, but yeah, very important uh, his big uh, st starting role, but uh, probably not breakthrough because seemingly it was very unpopular, I was told. Not many people like that, but uh, yeah, he was in a lot of nice movies. Uh, again, Destruction Babies. I, I watched Destruction Babies a long time ago, and there were so many great actors that I can't remember were in there, but uh, gotta rewatch it. And he was in this movie uh, character, which I think was pretty good. He was in the Cube remake, which I still haven't seen, but seemingly it's not that bad. And uh, yeah, some, some other stuff. He made a lot. He was in Gintama and. Uh, they make fun of him because uh, suddenly he got famous and stuff. Uh, yeah. Anyway, then we have Kotone Furukawa, who is absolutely gorgeous and amazing in this movie, and you might probably know her from Wheel of Fortune and Fantasy, where she's in the first story. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's probably her most famous movie. As uh, she was in another one that I liked very much, that was uh, Over the Town. If there's any chance to watch that, it's a movie by uh, Rikia Imaizumi, who I usually like. And uh, yeah, if you have the chance, probably not, uh, but uh, watch it. Then we have Daikin Ukudaira, who um, was in the parades and the village. I think that's both Michihito Fuji movies, which I both ha haven't seen yet, but um, I'm not a. Uh, Fuji fan, but he's, he's really bad, but uh, yeah, I still haven't seen a movie made by him that really convinced me, but uh, he was in this movie My Small Land, which is seemingly pretty uh, good and I haven't watched yet. And then we have Amane Okayama, who uh, I thought the whole time, like, where have I seen him? And he has a small part in the whole uh, Kingdom franchise and he's in Destruction Babies like everyone is in Destruction Babies and he was in a Sakana no Ko so a fish tail I think which I loved very very much and he was in another Michito Fuji film uh, The Journalist which I think was maybe one of his better movies probably so uh, yeah I, I kind of liked it even though it's a bit 
shallow maybe. Anyway, then we have Yoshi 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 Arakawa. No, Yoshi 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 no. Thank you. Poor baby. Um who is in a lot of like early 2000 stuff like Kamikaze Girls at Tokyo, Memories of Matsuko, Survive Style 5, um, then recently he was in Kubi and all this stuff. So there are very very high chances that, chances that you have actually seen him. He has a very memorable, oh, pretty round face, uh, good boy. Then we have Masataka Kubota, uh, Certain Assassin's First Love, Rurouni Kenshi in A Man. A lot of good good uh, stuff. Uh, yeah. And we have Matsu Yoshioka, who played the lead role in Chime, and he was in this movie uh, Onoda, uh, 10,000 Nights in the Jungle, which got released by Third Window Films. And I have the disc here, and I still haven't watched it. Shame on me. Uh, and he was in the gorgeous Underwater Love, uh, released by Third Window Films as well. And, oh, I didn't know that he was in The Depths uh, by Ryusuke Hamaguchi, which is, as far as I know, Mostly Korean movie, or am I wrong? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I haven't watched that yet. It's uh, hopefully as good as every Hamaguchi movie. Then we have uh, Masaaki Akahori, um, who is, uh, yeah, we've seen him in Journey to the Shore, Yama Ona, and uh, Birds Without Names, I saw him. That's a movie by, 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 by Kazuya Shiraishi. Good boy. Uh, I think he made a samurai movie or something that comes out soon. Uh, very nice. And let's see any other very relevant people. Oh, yeah, it's a very, very small role, but always lovely. Uh, Yutaka Matsushige, another face that you've seen in plenty of movies like A Ring or Yurika or One Must Call, Last Life uh, in the Universe, Charisma. Uh, Cross you all the stuff he's everywhere. You've probably seen him. And another face like that, Yoshiyuki Morishita, uh, Ichi the Killer, Juon, uh, Hanabi, the Grudge, Kill Bill, everything, Swing Girls, Taste of Tea. He has his uh, funky teas, and you definitely have seen him. And yeah, I guess that's enough for the cast. There's some other people you might know, but let's not spend too much time on these things here already see the counter counting it's already late um so cloud what is cloud cloud is a kind of thriller action thriller i would say many people said it has this big uh like genre switch in the middle and i don't really feel like that it feels more like a pretty smooth um uh, shift from more horror-esque to more direct a home invasion to more shooting and killing but I don't I don't know I, I, I didn't feel like the movie changes that much it builds up and escalates slowly but uh, to me it all felt very natural so I'm, I'm not sure how those people were like oh the first half is almost nothing and then you have uh, uh, just bullets flying everywhere. Um, no, to, to me it felt very organic and uh, structured and uh, yeah, nice build escalation. So I'm not sure. Oh, and by the way, before I forget this, if I remember correctly, the movie that Japan is now nominating as their candidate for the Oscars next year. And I think that's a really weird choice. I love this movie, but it's really weird. Um, yeah, anyway, so, um, what is it about? Let's maybe focus a little bit on the story. It's a very simple story. We have, uh, the main character, played by Masaki Suda, uh, Ryosuke Yoshi, who, um, is a relatively normal dude. He works in a factory, and he has his uh, girlfriend, played by Kurone Furukawa, and yeah, she's a little bit like, oh, yeah, you change something. Maybe she wants to move. She is threatening to move into a, back to the par to her parents' house, and um, basically he's like, oh my god, you can't do that. And um, yeah, so he gets a little bit pressure, and yeah, he has a second job, and 
I think that's a brilliant idea to make him a reseller because that makes him by default the most despicable, disgusting person in the world, even though he would probably say, oh, I don't do anything illegal, and that's the whole point. Um, I mean, sure, there's some illegal stuff uh, connected to that because sometimes his uh, goods are fake, but he doesn't care because why would he, or sometimes he doesn't send them or whatever, so... There's some illegal stuff, and I, I would say this whole thing with uh, buying limited stock to inflate the price artificially to and just resell it uh, more expensively uh, should be illegal and <laughs> should be uh, punishable. And I hate these people. And uh, I guess there are many, many people like that who hate them, like people who like to go to concerts or, uh, or who like to just buy uh, nice goods. For example, uh, these baby assassins uh, goods, I guess a lot of them were just s bought by resellers and they speculate to be able to uh, sell them online for very high prices. And that's not cool. Nobody likes you if you're like that. But uh, yeah, I can totally see these people be like, oh yeah, but it's not illegal, I can do that. I'm not breaking the law, no, but it makes you uh, like a morally bad person. And uh, yeah, I hope nobody, not even your mother, loves you. Yeah, so uh, anyway, so I think that's a pretty great idea because you have a person who's by default very hateable and punchable and uh, yeah, you wish all bad things to them. But on the other hand, he's still kind of a normal person. He's not a like gangster boss or a serial killer or something. He's still a relatively normal person and his uh, crimes uh, are yeah, nothing that's really like terrible that puts other people's life in danger. You could just not buy this crap. Yeah. So, uh, it's kind kind of, yeah, it's maybe you, you want him to be punched in the face, but maybe he doesn't need to die. Yeah, so it's a little bit ambivalence there in your feelings, like, uh, no? But we don't wish him anything good happening, and nothing good happens to him. Uh, he's, uh, like, a little bit not too stupid. Like, he knows, oh, the situation is getting worse when people put uh, dead rats in front of his house, I think. Or uh, someone puts a cable on the street and he drives in there with his uh, bike and falls down and uh, gets hurt a little bit and stuff like that. So he, he's uh, smart enough to realize something's wrong here and maybe it's time for a change and the girlfriend is pushing too. There's strange people on the bus and this is all like presented in a way that's like cold and distant as possible and it's all very simple, very clear shots, minimal camera moves and um, his home is just uh, awful tristesse is that an english word i hope uh, it's just like shelves with boxes and uh, he's in the middle and all he does is sitting in front of his computer staring at the screen waiting for things to pop like hey sold 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 and it's, it's more like a game where you try to uh, get the high score and when he checks his bank account that's the high score he got it he got a lot of money and then he uses that money to buy more stuff that he sells so basically there's no happiness in his life his relationship seems pretty awful as well so his factory job actually seems more enjoyable than the rest of his life i would say so he's a pretty pretty sad cog in the re like machinery of capitalism and um, yeah, that's what the whole movie is about, capitalism and how awful it is and the small things that people do to each other, especially like supported by the anonymity of the internet. Like you, you, you can do stuff to people that you can't see 
Like if you had to see their faces and actually talk to them and interact with them and uh, listen to their complaints, uh, probably you wouldn't do these things, but because you don't have to do that, you don't have to see them, you don't have to talk to them, you can just ignore their complaints because it's just a textbook somewhere on the internet. Um, it's very easy to uh, deal with the suffering that you cause. And um, yeah, so we have this very empty, shallow, hateable person and yeah, at some point, of course, things go worse and uh, that we will talk about that in the spoiler section later. So, why did I enjoy this film so much? First, uh, it's another uh, 5 out of 5. Um, I think overall the ratings are a little bit more, a little, little bit lower. If we look here, and it's, a, it's an average of 3.4, but there are very, very few really high ratings, I would say. A lot of fours on Letterboxd. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure why. I, I mean, some people say this movie is a little bit like maybe too much of a genre movie while looking like an art house movie, if that makes sense. That's a thing that Kurosawa did a lot, like all his camera work and the images are very perfectionistic in a way that's really simple and um, functional. As a sound design, he is absolutely amazing. Um, with all like background noises everywhere, the soundtrack works very well has a little bit uh, psycho elements here and there, but it's uh, very good at supporting the suspense. And um, yeah, the characters are just not really there, it's just not, not real humans, just machines basically. And um, yeah, somehow it's still very engaging. Many people said it's boring for the first hour. I don't think so. I think um, it builds up the tension very, very well. It shows you very well why people hate him so much. It shows very well what kind of person that is, what kind of mentality you probably need to have to do that kind of uh, work, if you want to call that work. And um, yeah, how how um, able you need to be to just don't care. For example, there's this one scene where he goes to a like a, a comic shop or a figure shop, and he buys the whole new um, uh, uh, this new figure that he just buys everything this shop has. And um, outside are the people waiting for the shop to open. And before the shop even opens, the guy comes out, puts out the sign, or sold out, and everybody goes crazy while he drives away with the whole batch in his car. And uh, yeah, you can understand why people react the way they will react later. And um, I, I don't know, for, for me, that's maybe a little bit old school. Everything here feels very old fashioned. Like the long build up, the way it's uh, presented, the way in the end, we, I think we have another driving scene with a rare projection. I think he still does that and I love it. It looks amazing. And um, yeah, why, why not if it works? I, I think it's in some interview he, he talked about why he still uses rare projection and uh, looks pretty much like it or maybe more digital but I think the lights and all were on the faces of the, the people so maybe just a normal nice rare projection I love it and um, yeah just just the way it's all presented is so smooth and nice and especially in the second half um, we get a visually exciting setting and it looks so good how he plays with light and shadows. Um, uh, wonderful. Uh, but yeah, b before it stays more around his house 
And yes, that's very empty and soulless like himself. Uh, yeah, but works all very well. So, so I, I don't really get the the first half is boring stuff and the second half is so weird and different. For me, it feels all very organic and smooth and uh, very uh, escalation-esque. So yeah, it worked perfectly fine for me. I was never bored. I didn't even notice it's 123 minutes long. I felt like, yeah, I don't know, 100 or so. So it went by really quickly. The cast is wonderful. Um, it's just a lot of it's pretty funny. It's a lot of fun actually. Um, the whole story uh, with the capitalism critique is very nice. Um, yeah, it's just, just a through and through very entertaining movie, and I I can't find any uh, noteworthy flaws here. So. If you like a good old-fashioned uh, thriller with some shootouts, uh, give it a try, watch it, enjoy it. Uh, like I said, the trailer was a little bit misleading because it looked more like a home invasion movie, which is a little part of it, but uh, yeah, not exactly what you get. But anyway, <laughs> uh, let's get a little bit more into spoiler territory because uh, why not? And uh, yeah, like like I said, uh, people get really really angry at him, and uh, there's a website to dox people like him, so to give out their address and uh, stuff like that. So that actually happens, and some people who he treated badly in his life come to get him, and uh, funnily they meet in an arcade, like a video game arcade, uh, which immediately sets this whole thing in a game context. Like human hunting game, manhunt um, is, is is a thing in many movies. Um, there are so many movies where people make a game out of hunting humans and killing humans, and yeah, that's basically what they do here. It's uh, yeah, immediately internet gaming basically, which is what a lot of people technically do. They play games where they kill others online, so. Why not? Uh, here, in a more literal sense, in the real world, um, not sure how much they completely forgot the real world and how much is just online. So this whole aspect, uh, nah, how connected are real life and online world and uh, whatever, uh, this is quite important here. But um, where do we go? But yeah, anyway, it has a very real-world um, consequences, what uh, he does online, which most of the time doesn't happen. Like, most of the people who do crap online uh, don't have any consequences to fear. So, uh, quite something new here. So, why not? Pretty good. Very fun. Um, yeah, and in the end, they go into this uh, his house, uh, capture him, take him out, and somehow he... Uh, had this guy who wanted to work with him as an assistant and he didn't really like him. But uh, he's able to get a gun and uh, suddenly becomes a big action hero. And it's hilarious how this dude, who is uh, good for nothing, but uh, yeah, suddenly becomes a big action hero and just uh, kills everyone and gets him out just to throw him in an even worse, darker hell of capitalism. It's just wonderful how this whole thing plays out. Of course, his girlfriend uh, isn't trustworthy either. She's just there for the money. And um, who would have guessed a uh, character in this movie does stuff just for the money? And yeah, it, it just turns into this whole like capitalist hellhole. You get saved from the people who want to kill you for your wrongdoings online and instead of learning something you are basically forced to do more of it and uh, get deeper into hell and it's just hilarious and uh, fun and uh, the whole action is in a like a factory and it looks amazing there's like a 
a fan, a huge fan, which plays nicely with light and shadow on their faces and stuff. There's a lot of uh, uh, like transparent foil curtains that just look amazing. You, you can make a movie look this good with really, really limited resources. I, I would say this movie looks better than almost every modern Hollywood blockbuster with probably a tiny, tiny portion of their budget. I mean, it was probably uh, not much that they had if you consider that the big budget uh, block, as uh, the big blockbuster budget is about 10 million or something, 10 million dollars. Uh, nothing here, probably. It's uh, probably in the US, not even an indie movie. It's like, yeah. Homeless people uh, filming themselves level of filmmaking, I guess, but uh, better, better looking, better sounding. If Hollywood movies were this good, this well produced, I would be very happy, but uh, they do the flash or something like that. Um, yeah, so it's it just fantastic how it looks and feels. Um, the, 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 the impact of the sounds is wonderful. It's really loud. When it gets loud, it's really loud. And um, yeah, it's just a, a wonderful, entertaining movie. So somehow I, I get it why they want us to be the candidate for the Oscars, but I, on the other hand, when did a like, thriller, action thriller ever win an Oscar? I don't know. Um, it's wonderful. I'm a little bit all over the place and I'm probably out of stuff that I want to say. I just uh, love Kiyoshi Kurosawa this year. Like his three movie run is so good and I just recommend watching them all uh, if you can. It's, it's just it's gorgeous. Like, I don't, I don't know, every, every time I watch a Kurosawa movie, or at least this year I go to the cinema, I watch one of these movies and I'm like, you're a really good director. <laughs> Yeah, just like wow, and um, yeah, ju just a joy to see how a real master director directs stuff that's so so much of an understatement that looks so reduced and at the same time so great. And uh, yeah, in Hollywood, this would probably not happen, I guess, or. I don't know, not on the bigger stage. Um, I have no idea. It's, it's uh, just just gorgeous. Uh, thank God for Kiyoshi Kurosawa. I should watch more of his stuff. I should watch Cure. Rewatch Cure. I don't know if I finished it or I, I was asleep most of the time last time. Um, yeah, just a lot of love for Kiyoshi Kurosawa. And uh, yeah, I will now. Uh, pack my suitcase to go to Onomichi to see where Mr. Obayashi made his movies and uh, maybe I will show you some some stuff from there if I'm nice. Let's see. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope this was not too confused and I'm really brain-wise messed up today. I just watched a Tetsu 2 body hammer in the cinema and it's uh, amazing. I just want uh, Shinya Tsukamoto to make a big budget 10 million dollar movie just to see what that looks like. I think body hammer had like 3 million, 3.5 million budget and it looks so good. And especially like cinema, I saw things that I haven't seen yet. I watched this movie a million times and I there's still details that I haven't noticed, haven't seen. So, so good. Um, I will talk about Body Hammer and the other Tetsus and some other place, El Tsukamoto. I said before I will talk about Shadow of Fire and Vital very soon because there are the new discs from Third Window Films. And uh, yeah. Anyway, I uh, just completely messed up brain and I hope this was slightly interesting. Anyway, have a good day and see you soon. Bye.